Once your work is finished, don't watch the television. Once your work is finished, find something constructive to add to your mind. Have an hour for reading. And I don't mean read comic books. Once your work read something finished, that will make you know what's happening. Once your so work when you get finished, into conversation, you can sound intelligent to add to your mind. You Have an hour Do for reading. Do you hear me what I'm saying? And I don't mean read comic books. Read something that will make you know what's happening. So when you get in a conversation, you can sound intelligent, even if you aren't. Do you hear me what I'm saying? All right, all right. I'm back again. <laughs> Happy 2020. January the 4th, 2020. And I'm back in that old spot. Oh, my son is by his grandmother. Son, you're by your grandmother. I mean, I'm happy for you. You spend a lot of time with her. In your younger age, it reminds me of myself when I was, you know, and my, my first memories of living with my grandmother in Opelousas, Louisiana, you know, on a small house. Next door was her sister and her chill, all my cousins. And it was about 1984. We actually had, a, we still had an outhouse. <laughs> 1983. We didn't have a bathroom. Google that if you don't, you probably, you'll never know what that is, <laughs> but it's an outhouse. We didn't have indoor plumbing in 1983. That's where I come from. Yeah, you know, so I'm glad, man. You spend as much time as you can with your grandmother, man. I'm glad you're getting that bond, you know. I, di I didn't have that growing up, you know, as a child. I had it very, very young, but we moved away, so... You'll know that story. Today, I'm not doing a book review either. I think this year, I'm just going to start telling stories about my life, man. I, I, I got to record this stuff. You know, people don't read anymore. <laughs> so I was going to write it in a book, but I think it'll reach more if I do it on video. And, you know, this year is the year, you know, that I'm giving up drinking alcohol. So... You know, it feels like I have a lot more free time now, <laughs> you know, I'm not drinking any beer anymore. So, you know, when I'm home in the evening, instead of getting a beer and watching the game, I'll make a video and, you know, still do some reading, you know, so that's what I'm doing. Let me show you this book I'm reading, though. I, might, I don't know. I probably won't do a review of this one because I'm um, just reading it chapter by chapter, but it's awesome, you know. I'm really getting into my health. I've been jogging the past two years. You know, I'm trying to get it running marathon. You know, I'm, I'm building a gym at home. I have some dumbbells and some kettlebells and a resistance band. So I'm really getting in shape. Really want to start eating right this year. You know, I've been, been watching a lot of vegan videos. Shout out to them, man. <laughs> Shout out to everybody on YouTube that do the workout videos like and subscribe all them dudes man it's, it's so many of them but shout out to those people man you know shout out to all the people that's, that's lost weight that's trying to lose weight man shout out to them but today well i, I had made a video but I, I i took it down a few um weeks ago because it was a little too ignorant but i said i was gonna start reading comments so in my brave new world review there's a comment from a guy, Jesus Christ 69, <laughs> and he said that he knew me from Marble Falls, and I replied, yes, I did live there for three years. So I want to talk about my experience in Marble Falls, Texas. <laughs> Coming right, right up. Okay. And, okay, I have to go back, I guess. 2011, I moved to Marble Falls, Texas. Um, I had just went through a divorce with my first, my ex-wife. You know, never going to talk about that on here. <laughs> but I went through a divorce. And we, um, I'm, I decided to move out there. My dad has a church. And they went out there after the storm. You could Google it if you want to, smoking for Jesus. I'm not getting into that. But I moved out there. You know, I lived with him for a little while. He lives in what's called Kingsland, Texas, which is the woods. So I decided to move further. Now, this city is called Marble. I call it Meth Head 
Falls, Texas, <laughs> and I'll tell you why. But it's about an hour away from Austin. Small town, you know, predominantly white, not too many blacks. The blacks that seem like they were born and raised there, they they are very, very docile. They're very, they, it's almost like you're going back in time. <laughs> like, you know, it's, it's crazy. But I understand why now after living there, you know, because I want to talk to you about Marble Falls, Texas and the racism that I encountered there. Now, if you grew up in a predominantly black city, New Orleans, Memphis, you know, I think you, you know, read about racism and you see it on TV and you know it's there and you know that's covert racism, but this was the first time that I ever experienced overt racism. <laughs> I mean, I can laugh about it now, but it was shocking. It was shocking. I can tell you one time I went into a bookstore. I went into a, a grocery store, H-E-B. If you're from Texas, you know what that is. And I brought a book, Isabel Wilkins, The Warmth of Other Sons. And the cashier was shocked. She was like, "You? Oh, this is, is this for you? <laughs> Are you buying this for somebody? You're buying a book? <laughs> like she was just totally shocked that I was buying a book. <laughs> I said, I'll just order my stuff on Amazon from now on, you know, and I, I actually worked at a convenience store there for six months. And then about maybe a year, I worked in this warehouse. Uh, it was to a black guy. I knew a black guy from New Orleans that I met out there. He was the, he was in ship and he got me on. Two white guys, they never spoke one word to me the whole time I was there. <laughs> and two Mexican guys, you know, I think they were illegal aliens or something. Yeah, I said illegal aliens. Yep, and I'm going to say it till I die. <laughs> but they, they were cool, though. They were cool, you know. Guy was trying to hook me up with a, he said he had 18 sisters. And he was trying to hook me up with what? He, he, yeah, yeah, five of my sisters are with brothers. That's what he said. You know, they try to get that citizenship, you know. But, man, I mean, just working at a convenience store, I worked with this guy. His name was Tim. And this guy, he would talk about, oh, we're poor because Obama and Obama this and Obama this. I'm like, dude, who's ever president, you're lazy and you're a bum. So I don't think, you know, and I mean, just, you will go into, I went to the DMV one time there and everybody just stared at you like, you know, it's it's like when I lived there, I lived there from 2011, 2015, it was February the 26th, the 27th, I believe. I packed up all my stuff and I rode out. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I had been stopped by the police so many times there. Uh, one time, I'm in my work uniform. The police stopped me, like always. I got used to it. The guy asked me, it was during the day, he said, Does you, do you have a job? <laughs> I'm like, dude, no, I just wear a work uniform for fashion, you know? Oh, man. I mean, when I worked at a convenience store there and my car was broke. And I lived maybe 10 minutes from, I would walk home. I would get off at maybe 9, 10 o'clock at night. The police officer would follow me the whole time. And I actually flagged him down. I was like, dude, can you just give me a ride since you're going to follow me home? So for about two months, the police officer dropped me off every night. <laughs> I, I thought it was cool. I was like, man. You know, but he followed me every day for about a week. He just followed me home. I, th I said, man, this is ridiculous. I have got to get out of here, you know. And and I don't blame that on conservatism because these people, they claim to be conservative and they claim to be libertarians. But, I mean, this living in Texas, it's more, they want more of a theocracy, you know, because a true conservative is not worrying about what other people are doing. A true conservative believes that People should be free to do whatever happens as long as they're not, you know, bothering somebody else. So that's why racism and conservatism don't mix. Those people are liars. You know, I'm not a big Bible thump or whatever, but, you know, if you read John 8, he said, you know, their father is the devil. So, you know, lying is their language. <laughs> you know, so they're going to be hypocrites because their father is the devil. They can only do what their father said, you know.
And like I say, you know, I don't believe in an um, actual devil with a horn, but yeah, you know, these people could claim to be one thing, but, you know, even with the law, and if you don't know what any of those words mean, you need to study them. You know, conservative, libertarian, you know, hypocrisy, you know, just you, you really need to study them, you know. And they, they give they give conservatism a bad name because they mix it with their racism. And it's sad, you know. I'm glad that I've done the research and studied it, not to lump everybody that claims to be in that area, but I, I could understand why people do, you know. And it's a lot. There's one, I met this one girl and she told me that I had like four baby mamas. <laughs> I was like, I don't even have kids. <laughs> and she was like, okay, you're four baby mamas. And I was like, oh, okay, I don't think that's a cool joke to say, <laughs> you know? And she had four by like three different guys, but <laughs> it was, I, was, I guess she assumed that everybody was like her, but yeah, man, it, it was something. I go to, I went to go play volleyball. It was this guy, white guy, he was real nice. I forgot his name. He would come play basketball with us on Tuesdays. So he invited me to play volleyball Thursday and homie, hit the ball, homie, what's up? You know, like, I mean, dude, I, I actually walked out of the game because <laughs> it was like, you know, oh, like the ball would go on the side and it was basketball. They were, oh, you should go play basketball. Like, really, dude? And this was like 2014. I think this is not like 1950, but it was actually like living in like the 50s, man. They're so behind time. So I can understand the outrage of, you know, left-leaning people if they have to deal with that all their lives, man. You know, and I've also, I've had stories from other people, you know, stories from other people with the same, you know, that were there. So I rolled out and I'll never... <laughs> I told my dad, I'll never, I won't even go to visit. I'm done. I mean, I know because the police will stop you if they see you and they don't know who you are. Like, that. I don't I don't think that's legal, but, <laughs> you know, so that was Marble Falls, Texas, man. Um, I wouldn't suggest you visit, <laughs> but it was an experience. Peace.